Okay, so Johnny on the channel asked that please do a video about human meta pneumovirus, what precautions we take and how it affects the health. So because the, this virus is in the news for last 3-4 days, so I thought of reading the literature and give you a brief info about this virus. So what is there actually on the records. So basically this virus is not a new one. It has been there for last 60 years. It has been causing infection for last 60 years, but it was first detected in somewhere in 2001 in, in Netherlands where they've identified a new type of virus, which is usually affecting the children's. So it is classified as a fam uh, in the pneumoviridae family as a large enveloped negative sense RNA virus. And now after two, 2016, it is reclassified as metanemovirus and it has been separated as the related one which is orthonemovirus uh, in which RSV, respiratory syncytial virus is also present. Now there are various subtypes of this metanemovirus, human metanemovirus HMPV. Uh, they are divided into A and B, uh, HMPV A, HMPV B and they are further divided into A1, A2, B1, uh, B2. The, there is not much genetic uh, difference among all these. Uh, they all call, all can cause diseases. But the point is, whenever there is an outbreak occurs or a seasonal uh, thing happens, usually one of the strains remains prevalent, uh, particularly in that season. So all of them don't affect simultaneously. Usually one strain is predominant in a particular season. Then how pathogenesis, how it infects. So basically it's a respiratory virus. It affects the respiratory system. So the G, it affects the integrin alpha 5 beta 1 has been identified as a receptor that facilitates infection of the epithelial cells. And once it uh, affects the epithelial cells of the respiratory system, then it causes mucus hyperproduction and hyperplasia of the respiratory epithelium. And when there is a hyperproduction of mucus and there is a respiratory hyperplasia, there obviously will have airway obstruction and hyper responsiveness and that's why it can aggravate asthma also. So that's the pathophysiology. How it is transmitted? It is transmitted uh, from humans to humans. It can transfer from human to humans. How it will be? As with other violet infection, it will transfer to you know, droplets, aerosols, fomites, but not small, uh, not small aerosols. So if we keep it uh, some six or more feet distance away from the uh, infected persons, the chances of getting the infections becomes very, very less. So that's that's the thing. Nosocomial infections, yes, it can occur because uh, uh, if the patient is affected, we don't know the attendant is also affected. And once the patient is affected, that attendant may not show symptom at the same or the healthcare professional may not show the symptoms at that time. And then it can spread like at every respiratory virus. So better to isolate or cohort such patients in a different sort of or different beds uh, like that. If possible, treat them in uh, private rooms or if in ICU, then cohort the patients. Now, how, how is the incubation period? So from the start of infection, suppose a person get infected. So five to seven days is the incubation period after which the patient start developing the symptoms. And that's the time means five to seven days is the peak time of viral shedding. So at this stage, and the uh, patient is transmitting the virus at the peak and once the uh, symptoms start then it is a self-limiting disease and gradually the symptoms resolves over a period next uh, period of three to five days the symptoms resolves so this is thing epidemiology i already discussed with you that it is prevalent everywhere it is prevalent ubiquitous means um, in Netherlands, United Kingdom, Finland, Australia, Canada, Kenya, China, Norway and many other countries. So this is nothing new. It is there for life. In fact, in 2018, 14.2 million cases were there in the children less than five years of age. So it's a common, common thing. Now, it affects all age groups specifically in the children's less than five years of age and the and the people who are very old older age or those who have a chronic illness like copd or where they are fragile or have a transplant patients or those who have immunocompromised patients like that one uh, one seasonal variation it is written here that it occurs like in united states or those sort of western world countries it occurs in the late winter and early spring while in this part of the country like hong kong or china it occurs in the late spring and in summer season so that's that's why it is in late spring of uh, summer season it can occur 
their cross reactivity is with 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 rsv virus respiratory syncytial virus so if somebody got infected with rsv there is a partial immunity against this virus and rsv is also very common now when it affects the children and when it affects the adults so usually the children is the first time they get affected and it's a self emitting disease so what is the symptoms they will develop usually they have a symptoms of cough rhinitis and uh, cough rhinitis fever but wheeze is classical means whenever uh, this virus affects the wheeze is disproportionate as seen with uh, other viral infections even in adults when they infect means uh, uh, older patients or adults in which there is a reinfection the symptoms will be cough nasal congestion rhinorrhea dyspnea ho hoarseness and wheezing and the wheezing even persist in such patients for a longer period of time also means even the symptoms have resolved the wheeze persists for a longer period of time some studies or some literature is showing that it may be associated with the development of asthma uh, uh, later on but they are not um, confirmed sort of reports so all the upper respiratory tract infections manifestations are there and also the lower respiratory tract infection like cough and the wheezing are there dyspnea can also be present then what is the spectrum it can cause upper respiratory tract infection it can cause lower respiratory tract infection it can cause bronchiolitis it can cause severe pneumonia it can cause ards but the incidence is very very low in rare case scenario it can cause encephalitis also the risk factor for children is those who are prematurely born uh, in particular area or female sex or the phenotype or genotype of b b1 b2 are more prone to children so this was about the symptoms copd exacerbations are not very much uh, related to this virus but asthma exacerbation can occur recurrent infection yes once you have this infection it can occur later on like in children it has happened adults and also it can happen uh, adult all adult infections are usually the reinfection because most of them uh, have infection in the childhood in immunocompromised those the peculiar one at risk are transplant patient and those who have received hematopoietic uh, cell transplant patients the uh, little bit more incident in hiv infected patients or uh, cvrt is little high then hematologic malignancy uh, patient lung transplant or patient with malignancy these have for obvious reason a little more uh, uh, chances of getting infected now once you have a patient with these symptoms viral sort of fever you find wheeze also so what are the tests which will help this so diagnosis is uh, by rt pcr just like we did for covid ptr covid uh, or for that matter for this also there is an rt pcr available in some labs in some labs may not be present but rt pcr is the standard thing some multiplex pcr in which there is a viral panel and they do a uh, lots of virus uh, testing there in multiplex pcr also they test it so but other than serology or viral cultures and are not very useful they are they are only for research purpose for so rt pcr and multiplex pcr if available can help you in making the diagnosis no specific thing in cbc counts obviously but there will can be leukopenia per se treatment supportive there is no proven medication which can help you out just supportive medications we should give we should try and all uh, all the how can we prevent all the taking precaution infection control prevention measures hand washing covering the face wearing mask proper distance one important thing is if the kids are infected in a family then the old people or those who have comorbid condition should avoid playing with the kids or interacting with the kids for at least period of 9 to 10 days 8 to 10 days so nothing specific in the treatment all supportive treatment which we give in other viral infections also the same applies here also no vaccine is available at the moment but on and all uh, while going through all the literature found that this is a common virus it happens almost every year outbreaks are common because it spreads um, because it spreads like any other virus uh, in a community so do read more about this virus and don't be fearful if it if it is occurring the healthcare professional will take care of so better equipped with yourself with the correct information from authentic resources and do read more about it thank you